right now. Making headlines this morning, some potential good news at the pump as the Biden administration makes a move to curb high gas prices. Outside with live cam should be a pretty good looking Friday leading into a pretty good looking weekend. Justin Horn's got your forecast coming up. And good morning. It is April 1st. It is April Fool's Day, but no fooling. It's a great day. It will be a great Friday. Day. It is Friday and it's Fiesta Friday as well. Yeah. Oh, Oyster Bake starts today. Big Fiesta Fiesta party downtown last Ooh, night. We have so kicked much this going. thing off in style, haven't we? But nothing bigger than uh, Steph's birthday. That's oh, true. Well, Happy course. birthday. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you. No yeah. fooling. It's your Thank birthday? Thank you so much. Yes, so yes. Much. You were born on April Fool's Day? Yeah, isn't really? that awesome? Wow. <laughs> yes. Well, it was, yes, it is. It was interesting growing up, of course, uh, but it's I all right. <laughs> yeah. I bet. Well, look, we're going to get you a good forecast stuff. So you can, you know, party for your party and then Fiesta party. It's just a party all the way around. <laughs> Uh, here's what to expect today. We're going to see uh, some pretty nice weather, mostly sunny, a little windy though. We're going to get some southerly breezes anywhere from 20 to 25. This weekend, nice mornings, warm afternoons, looking pretty good. Then we focus on Monday. We have, do have a rain chance. Next week's going to bring us a lot of different kind of weather. We have that rain chance Monday, but we also have some hot weather on the way and then a front. We'll see what that means for our forecast late next week. In the meantime, we're sitting at 56 degrees here in San Antonio. Some 40s on the map this morning. Boy, that's that's uh, that's nice for early April. 47 in Kerrville, 43 in Fredericksburg, and a little closer look here. It's 45 Bernie State, 50 in Boulevardie. So it is jacket weather. You won't need it though this afternoon. Let's talk about Oyster Bay. That's happening today. Uh, five o'clock when things get underway. 84 degrees, 74 by 8 p.m. and then by 65 we're talking, uh, or by 11 o'clock we're talking 65 degrees. Sunset is at 7:52. Much more on the way about our Fiesta forecast. What about Monday with the River Parade? We'll jump into that coming up here in just a little bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. San Antonio police have made a second arrest in a string of robberies. Police say 34 year old Ozzie Lasoya and Michael Kane were involved in seven robberies since last November. Investigators say the cases include hair salons, a fruteria and two small phone businesses. Some of the youngest victims were just eight and nine years old. That's according to police. Now officers say that surveillance video from the robberies led to those arrests. We are following a major development this morning from the war in Ukraine, an urgent evacuation of people from a city described as hellscape. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details. Today in Ukraine, Russia claims a humanitarian corridor will open from the besieged city of Mariupol, where an estimated 100,000 people have been trapped in a humanitarian crisis with little food, water, or electricity for weeks. Russian forces have also handed back control of the Chernobyl nuclear plant after holding the site since February. According to unconfirmed reports, Russian troops may have suffered radiation sickness after digging trenches in contaminated areas. In other areas of Ukraine, intense fighting rages on. Multiple missiles hit the capital of Kyiv Thursday, one striking while ABC's James Longman was on the air. We just heard an enormous explosion here uh, towards the north of where we're standing. And you can see there uh, deep, dark smoke rising into the, into, into the sky. Now, we're not sure what's been hit. But with Russia suffering so many setbacks, President Biden says Vladimir Putin may have placed some of his advisors under house arrest. I'm not saying this with a certainty. He seems to be self-isolating, and there's some indication that he has um, fired or put under house arrest some of his advisors. <laughs> Meanwhile, more people fleeing Ukraine are turning up on America's southern border. More than 600 are waiting at this holding area in Tijuana, Mexico, hoping to cross the border. This woman and her kids drawing Ukrainian flags. They've been waiting since Tuesday to enter the U.S. How hard has this been on you? <laughs> Emotionally, it was hard. Oh, we haven't been bathing. It's a very hard situation. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, President Biden has launched the largest release ever from the U.S. emergency oil reserve and challenged oil companies to drill more and attempt to bring down gas prices that have soared in recent months. Attempting to combat what he has labeled as Putin's price hike, the president says the U.S. will release roughly one million barrels of oil per day from the nation's strategic petroleum reserve over the next six months. Biden says there is no firm answer as to when gas prices could decline as a result of the move. 
However, the president thinks Americans could pay 10 to 35 cents a gallon less at the pump in the weeks ahead. Some lawmakers have blasted Biden's action to tap the reserve without first taking steps to increase American energy production. In Houston, an off-duty Harris County Sheriff's Office deputy has died after he was shot overnight while trying to stop suspects from stealing his catalytic converter during a trip to the grocery store. Now, according to officials, the suspects were outside attempting to steal that deputy's converter when the incident began. The deputy tried to stop them before they exchanged gunfire. Officials say the deputy returned fire but was ultimately struck by a bullet. He was later pronounced dead at the hospital. The entire incident played out in front of the deputy's wife, who remained unharmed during that situation. Those suspects reportedly drove themselves to the hospital and were being treated for gunshot wounds. What is now known as the Borrega Fire continues to burn in South Texas. It's prompted fire officials to advise nearby Corpus Christi residents to get ready to leave. The Texas A&M Forest Service says the fire is burning on 46,000 acres. As of this morning, it is about 50% contained. The Forest Service is working hard to extinguish the blaze. They say in addition to local first responders, 42 state and federal personnel are assigned to the fire. And that includes three dozen bulldozers, 16 fire engines, eight aircraft, including an air attack platform and single engine air tankers. Wind, humidity and dryness in the area can contribute to fueling that wildfire. And time now, 436 and 55 degrees for now. Still coming up, what homeowners can soon expect when Bear County Appraisal District mails their new home valuations to them. Also next, a preview. This first matchup with the Portland Trailblazers tonight and what the team has to do to keep the dream alive. And outside with your traffic authority, 1604 and Traysman, looks like there's some uh, First responder vehicles on the scene right there. It looks like there could be a crash at 410 and Broadway as well. Uh, coming into work this morning, I saw the um, trans guide signs warning people that there was, I think it was the eastbound exit from 281. Oh, watch in out. In that area that. somewhere, so uh, that could be a problem. Steve Cabasas could be here in a few minutes with more on that. We will check in with him and a beautiful morning out there with live cam. Although you may want a light sweater, but just for now, we'll be right back. Ferman Ujidobli getting his call to the hall. Sources confirming what was reported earlier by The Athletic that the four-time NBA champion will be a first ballot member of the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame for the class of 2022. The official announcement will come Saturday at the Final Four of the NCAA Tournament. Manu helped lead the Spurs to championships in 2003, 2005, 2007, and 2014 before retiring in 2018 as one of the most popular players in Spurs history. He brought the Euro step to the NBA along the way he helped his home country, Argentina, win an Olympic gold medal. Congratulations to Manu, 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 Manu. Meantime, our San Antonio Spurs still have some work to do. They are neck and neck with the Lakers for the 10th and final playoff position with just six games left in the regular season. That's because the Lakers lost to Utah last night. And the Spurs missed a golden opportunity to upset the number two seeded team in the West, the Memphis Grizzlies. The Spurs host the Blazers twice in the next three days starting tonight. But don't ask about the beatdown they put on Portland as part of their undefeated road trip. That's right out the window. Uh, we can't look at that. Uh, these are two big games back to back that we need to win. Um, so that's all we're focused on. We're in a position right now where every game counts. Um, we want to solidify that. Um, that playing spot. Uh, so, yeah, um, games like that are, are must wins for us. Do they know it's your birthday and they can win for you on your birthday? I Give hope a so. Birthday present? I hope so, David. Tip off seventh. Are you going tonight? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, I am. You go on your birthday. See? That's my birthday present. That's your birthday present? <laughs> yeah. Well, then they need to win. 7 30 is the tip off. Trailblazers tonight and then Trailblazers again at home on Sunday. Go, Spurs, go, please, for Steph. Aw, yes, please. This picture perfect weather for the opening round of the Valero Texas Open at the JW Marriott TPC Resort Course. Fan favorite and defending champion Jordan Spieth having a rough go of it yesterday afternoon. One over on 14 in the sand next to the green right there. Ooh, check out the perfect pitch that would set him up for his first birdie of the day, though. That was nice. He finished even today. Matt Kuchar on 12, 18, 12 footer to put him in 500 into the lead. That's until Russell Knox comes along on 15. And that put him at seven under in sole possession of the lead. J.J. Spawn looking for his first win on the PGA Tour. Could get it if he can keep making shots like that. That was an eagle 
on eight. Rare, but nice. Good looking day at the Valero Texas Open yesterday, round two. Getting ready to tee off here in just a couple hours. That's what I hear. Good weather. Mm -hmm. It helps. Yeah. <laughs> Time now, 442 and 55 degrees for now. Still coming up, why new appraisals for many homes have gone up by nearly 30%. Also next to producer for the Academy Awards is sharing new details about what happened right after the Will Smith slapping incident at the Oscars. Oscar producer Will Packer sharing what happened the moments after Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Academy Awards in an ABC News exclusive interview. ABC's Andrew Denver has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. It sounds like Chris Rock had the ability, the option, to have the LAPD go arrest and remove Will Smith. For the first time since that unthinkable onstage moment, <laughs> Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Our TJ Holmes going one on one with the producer of the 94th Academy Awards, and Will Packer. They were saying, this is battery, you can press charges, we can arrest him. You have, they were laying out the options. And as they were talking, Chris was, um, he was being very dismissive of those options. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have more of our exclusive interview with Will Packer as he walks us through the moments we didn't see at home, the attempts to get Will Smith to leave the ceremony, and what he thinks should happen to the best actor winner now. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. If you are a homeowner here in Bear County, new appraisals for single-family homes are up by an average of almost 28%. Marilyn Moritz explains why and what you can do about it. Armin Furman bought his historic home south of downtown a decade ago. You know, I got the house when I could afford it in the neighborhood. Since then, his home's value has shot through the roof. It's probably tripled. Yeah. He'd better brace himself. In about a week, the Bear Appraisal District will mail notices to all homeowners with their new valuations. I think most people would call it sticker shock. Chief Appraiser Mike Amesquita tells us, on average, house values are up a whopping 27.8%. That's unprecedented and during a pandemic. And we expected values to tank and anything but that happened. Mm -hmm. With work from home, people were wanting more space, uh, values went up across the board. By law, appraisals must reflect the housing market, which is sizzling. High demand with limited inventory has driven sales prices way up, and now appraisals too. But you likely won't pay taxes on that full new amount. For example, if your home was appraised at 250000 and is now 300000 there is a 10% homestead cap, so you will pay taxes on $275,000. Still, if taxing entities don't cut tax rates, many properties property owners will be paying hundreds more. What can you do? Make sure you claim your exemptions. You can also protest, and Mesquita encourages it. All the appraisal district gets out of higher values is a long, hot summer. The deadline to file is May 16th. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Take another look outside. Trans guide. To look there at I-37 at Houston. That looks pretty quiet, but what were the problems again, David? On East 410, up near the uh, Broadway exit area, when you get off of like 281 and you're going east uh, down 410, up in there, there was a crash this morning. Big sign up on their 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 little their uh, boards. Alert, yeah. Yeah, their look boards. So uh, we haven't seen that one on this run through here yet. But I know uh, Steve Cavazos will be here in a bit. He's getting it all together for us. So we'll find out exactly what's going on over there. If it might have been cleared up by now, who knows? Okay. Well, hopefully for It'll people nice. driving on a Friday. But the good news, I guess, is the weather will be nice. Yes, uh, the weather is uh, shaping up nicely. I'm supposed to be over here. I'm oh, making that, my way that's over. cool. Wherever you are, Bear I'm going to talk to you. It's Steph's birthday, so <laughs> don't worry birthday. about it. <laughs> it's, it's, here I am. Hi. <laughs> I get lost sometimes. It happens. Mike's supposed to leave me like detailed instructions. Anyway, uh, let's go outside for you. We've got uh, pretty nice weather, clear skies at the moment, and temperatures 56 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 43. We've got calm winds. The air is fairly dry. It's, it's going to turn into a pretty nice day. Yesterday was beautiful. Today will be pretty similar. Uh, 56 degrees at the airport. We do have some 40s on the map as you get up into Kerrville and Fredericksburg. 43 up there. 
46 Austin, 55 in Hondo, and a little closer in, 50 Boulevardi, 52 Rio Medina, 51 in Bandera. So a little chilly to start, but it'll be warm this afternoon. Here's a look at that forecast. By midday, we're already up to 73, uh, mid to upper 70s further south, and then by the afternoon, a lot of 80s. Uh, just like yesterday, just a little warmer. 84 here in San Antonio, 80 in Bandera. You'll be up around 81 in San Marcos, 81 Canyon Lake. The winds are going to pick up today, though. I won't caution you there. Yesterday, we didn't see much wind. Today, a little breezier. Gusts to 20, maybe 25 miles per hour. Uh, occasionally throughout the day. It won't be all day long, but you'll see uh, up and down gusts. As we look at the humidity tracker, and this is important because we've got the gusty winds, right? Do we have the really dry air? Do we have a fire danger today? I'd say it's there. It's not huge because we do have moisture trying to come back in here. So dew points are in the 40s versus the 20s, and that does make a difference when it comes to fires and how quickly they can spread. So at the moment, not too, too bad. Oyster bakes tonight, 5 p.m., 84 degrees. By 8 p.m., we're at 75, and then 68 by 11 p.m. Again, great, uh, great weather. Great for any plans you have out this evening. Uh, we should see mostly clear skies. Let's look ahead now. Future cast. Uh, as we get into tomorrow morning, we're expecting some clouds to work in. Yes, there is a weak frontal boundary, but don't get too excited about this. It doesn't really cool us down that much. It may may kick up a shower around 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, somewhere in that time frame. We're putting in a 10% chance. If we do see anything, it'll be A, very light, and B, very quick. That uh, moves through, sky's clear, and by tomorrow afternoon, we're still looking at warm temperatures despite that front. As we get into Sunday, maybe morning clouds coming back in briefly, and then another warm afternoon on Sunday. This weekend, uh, 87 Saturday, 86 on Sunday. Some breezy winds again on Sunday. Morning lows will be in the 50s. And then as we look down the line for Monday, what you can expect, we get another system coming through. There could be some clouds and drizzle early and then a chance for some storms late Monday night into Tuesday morning. Right now we have it at about a 40% chance. If we do see some storms, there's a possibility one or two of those could be strong. And then we clear out and we get some hot weather on Tuesday. So a lot to look at next week. As we look at the extended, we showed you the weekend forecast, but there's that 40% chance of storms uh, late Monday night into Tuesday, 92 on Tuesday. And I, I have a feeling it could be even a little warmer than that. Then we get a front, and this is a pretty good front for April, knocks us back down into the 80s and maybe 70s by Thursday. Of course, we're looking down the line to Battle of Flowers at this point. Looks pretty good, guys. That the is awesome. Operative word for Monday is late. Late. Mm. Time means everything, late. right? Yeah. Uh, and it's there's still some questions here, but I, I'm hoping we get the river parade in, maybe some rain after that. There you go. That yeah. work, be fine. Yeah, yep. you don't you don't want rain on your confetti. Not on my parade. No. Be doing that. <laughs> We're 53 and 54 degrees. <laughs> and still ahead, Sunny and Marvel's latest film hits theaters today. We're going to get a first look at Morbius. Sony and Marvel's new Morbius movie hits the theaters today, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers get a big honor. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. They're making Lilo and Stitch into a Broadway musical? The new film Better Nate Than Ever comes at an interesting time for Disney. In the news initially for the company's silence on Florida's so-called Don't Say Gay Law, then criticized by others for vowing to oppose it. The film, a comedy about a teen who happens to be gay trying to make it on Broadway, was written and directed by High School Musical, The Musical, The Series, executive producer Tim Fetterly. While I was disheartened by the company's initial stance, I also know my experience as a creator at Disney is one in which my show won the GLAAD Award. I, I employ queer creators and directors all the time on my series. And he tells me he was never censored once on Better Nate Than Ever, which is out today on Disney+. Plus. Disney is the parent company of ABC News. What did you do to yourself, Doctor? I wish I knew. Also out today in theaters, Jared Leto is Morbius, a vampire villain from the world of the Spider-Man comics that we haven't yet seen on film. The Bubble is a new comedy from the mind of writer-director Judd Apatow. And Sunday night, it's the Grammys on CBS. Funk, soul, and jazz artist John Batiste leads with 11 nominations. The Red Hot Chili Peppers heating up the Hollywood Walk of Fame, where the band now has a star. And frontman Anthony Kiedis said at the ceremony, it's a place they know well. We started off playing dive bars up and down this street and making a handful of people dance and come to life. 
Actor Woody Harrelson also spoke at the ceremony. And happy birthday to sex education star Asa Butterfield. He's 25 today. While Hilary Scott from the country band Lady A is 36. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. It is now 457 and 54 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, are you tired of those high gas prices? What the Biden administration is doing to bring prices down at the pump? Plus, how Instagram is making it even easier to share your favorite content via messages. Details coming up in Tech Bites. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guy. There's a look there at Loop 410 at Broadway. I wonder if this is what you were talking I about think, earlier. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos. He's in the studio right now. We'll be back. Live from Case at 12. Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. President Biden announces an unprecedented release of oil from the U.S. National Reserves. How much you could save at the pump, coming up. And taking a look outside with a live cam, it's nice and cool at 54 degrees and things are going to warm up. And good morning. It is Friday. It is April 1st. I don't know that you can get a bigger Friday. It's April Fool's Day. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. From, from everybody around here. It's Oyster Bake. We're in the middle of Fiesta. Fiesta, Fiesta last. Mm -hmm. People are partying. So I, does and it the Spurs. Get, and the, the Spurs, Spurs play tonight. The Spurs are playing tonight. Yeah. Does it get better than that? It's a great day. And it's Friday, like you said. I think a lot of people are happy about it being Friday, Jester. Mm -hmm. Weekend vibes. That's what mm -hmm. we got. Uh, we are excited. There's a lot going on this weekend. We're going to get you some pretty good weather. That's the good news. Uh, we're starting off this morning. Not so bad. 54 degrees at the airport. Northerly winds at about 6 miles per hour. We'll see those winds turn around to the south. A little bit later today, dew points are still low. So the air is still fairly dry. That gives us a pretty big warm-up this afternoon. We're up around 83, 84 for your high temperature. Mostly sunny skies through much of the day. Winds will get a little bit breezy from time to time. Could see some gusts close to 20 to 25. Let's look at the numbers right now. Still some 40s on the map. 46 in Kerrville, 42 in Fredericksburg. Yeah, you may need that light jacket this morning. Not for very long, though. Uh, around the area, 50. Uh, Randolph 60 though down at Stinson 55 divine 50 and new Braunfels right now just a few clouds there and the oyster bake forecast we mentioned this earlier looks good mostly sunny skies 84 degrees at 5 o'clock 75 by 8 p.m. 68 by 11 o'clock we'll call it comfortable the weekend brings uh, maybe a shower tomorrow morning don't get too excited about that but we have some better chances of rain coming up on Monday full seven day forecast coming up in just a bit but we got to get over to Steven now by the way Steven your jacket, it's on point this morning, man, I like that. Mm -hmm. On trend for Steph's birthday and Fiesta Viva, right? Uh, not looking too good out here, though. It's 1604 at Tradesman. Unfortunately, we do have a crash that came in a little bit earlier this morning. You can see that we do have a big portion of 1604 that has been shut down as first responders are trying to investigate what's going on out there. But uh, definitely already causing issues for drivers in that direction. Let's go ahead and take you to the map because as we get that bird's eye view, we are not seeing any slowdowns anywhere uh, from this point. But as we got to zoom in, here to the northwest side. These westbound lanes are what's being impacted there along 1604 again at Tradesman Drive. Not the only crash, unfortunately, that we're tracking this morning. Friday, it may be Steph's birthday, but we are starting off with some trouble on the roads. Let's take a look over here. 410 eastbound at Broadway Street. This crash, uh, David had mentioned going to commercial break, and Steph was talking about it earlier as well. We see that slowdown in those eastbound lanes where that crash has been reported. Again, we are going to watch these crashes closely, causing slowdowns for drivers, but somewhere else where we're not seen slow down are these travel times. So that's some good news here. I 10 eastbound. If you're coming in from Bernie, 25 minutes to downtown, 27 minutes on 281 southbound coming in again from Bulverde to downtown SA 26 on 35 traveling on those southbound lanes from New Braunfels. But this is going to be a problem for anybody that heads out have set out the door in the next few moments. We're going to watch it closely and give you those updates coming up a little later on. David Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a 16 year old is in the hospital after he was shot in the head overnight. Now this happened around 1.30 a.m. in the 5600 block of Culebra Road near Callahan on the city's west side. Police say a second victim was shot in the arm and ran to get help at a nearby gas station. Investigators say the suspect got away and had some sort of rifle with him. That 16 year old is in critical condition at the hospital. San Antonio police investigating a deadly shooting that happened on the city's south side. Police are questioning one man in that case. A neighbor called officers after hearing an argument and then a gunshot in an upstairs apartment. This happened at a complex on Old Corpus Christi Road in Southeast Military yesterday. 
Police found a man with a gunshot wound to his face. He died at the scene but has not been identified as of yet. A gun was recovered from the scene. Police say the man they're trying to find in question is in his mid to late 20s. Another shooting happening around 8 last night after two men got off of a bus. Police say that argument began on the bus ride, then spilled into a VIA parking lot on I-35 near Crestway. Now, during a fist fight, police say one of the men shot the other before running away. Officers believe they caught up with him, and that victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. A major announcement by President Biden to ease the pain at the pump. The U.S. will release up to 180 million barrels of oil over the next six months from the nation's emergency supply. Right now, the average cost for regular unleaded gas in San Antonio is about 350 per gallon. And that's according to Gas Buddy. ABC's M1 has the latest from Washington. This morning, as gas prices near a record high, growing anticipation for President Biden's largest ever release of oil from the nation's strategic petroleum reserve, one million barrels a day for the next six months. The bottom line is if we want lower gas prices, we need to have a more oil supply right now. The president saying he understands the pain at the pump with the national average of 4.23 a gallon up a dollar 36 in the last year, 62 cents in the last month. I got to restructure my whole life just around the fuel. Just so costly, the gas is crazy. You're looking at $600 to fill up that truck. And if you got four or five trucks, can you imagine what it costs? The president making it clear where he places the blame. Putin's war is imposing a cost on America and our allies and democracies around the world. But critics say the first two times the president dipped into the national reserves in the last six months, it didn't do much to help ease prices. Republicans instead saying Biden should focus on boosting U.S. energy production. I think the, the administration's anti-fossil fuel views are sort of like a religion. Until that policy changes, we're going to have a problem. The president also calling on Congress to pass policy that would force oil companies to pay fees on unused leases. Some economists, especially with inflation and the supply chain issues, backing the administration's move. Because that should uh, put a lid on oil prices at least over the coming six months. President Biden believes Americans could save 10 to 35 cents per gallon in the weeks to come, potentially dropping the national average to below $4 a gallon. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. 507 and 54 degrees for now. Still coming up, we're going to tell you about Instagram's new messaging features and how they work. Also up next, a closer look at why the number of deadly crashes is spiking across the country. And once again, outside with live cam, beautiful night for Fiesta Fiesta last night. We're expecting the same this weekend, but maybe some changes early next week. We'll, we'll worry about this weekend first. We Dustin Horn's got that for you coming up. It is a deadly surge with no signs of slowing down. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the number of deadly crashes spiked across the country in 2021. Over 30,000 of those crashes were reported during the first nine months of last year. And here at home, first responders are also seeing record-breaking numbers. So here's your traffic authority, Stephen Cavazos, with why some call it a crisis on the roads. The hardest part about doing what we do is just the senselessness of it all. Sergeant Anthony Dimmick is a traffic investigator with San Antonio Police and has responded to countless crashes in his career. Part of the job is to figure out how a crash happened. But when it comes to deadly crashes, Dimmick says family of victims just want to know why it happened to their loved one. That's often the hardest question to answer and, and the one that sometimes it just doesn't have an answer. Over 50 deadly crashes have been reported in San Antonio this year, but last year was a record. San Antonio police saw the number of deadly crashes peak at 205. That's 205 families last year that, that lost someone that was near and dear to them. Um, so just the number itself is just a shocking, shocking figure. The data includes crashes involving pedestrians, cyclists, motorcyclists, and vehicles. Dimmick says oftentimes investigators learn pedestrians were killed while wearing dark clothing or not using crosswalks. And sometimes it's distracted driving or driving Drivers not wearing a seatbelt. The vast majority of them could have been prevented. Dimmick believes this traffic trend is going in the wrong direction. To me, this is a crisis. 
Now, while it's not clear what has caused this uptick in crashes, the NHTSA reports that the increase came as more people returned to their daily lives. Now, San Antonio police also citing alcohol and speed as other factors. They do encourage anyone attending Fiesta events to plan ahead or use a ride steering service. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. It is 513 and 53 degrees. And still ahead, why Samsung is now letting some smartphone users repair their own devices. Plus, how Amazon is notifying Prime customers up to 24 hours in advance about specific deals. If you have to pre-rinse your dishes, you could be using the wrong detergent. And you're wasting up to 20 gallons of water every time. Let's end this habit. Skip the rinse with Finish Quantum. Its active lift technology has the power to tackle 24-hour dried-on food stains without pre-rinsing for an unbeatable clean. Together, we can help save America 150 billion gallons of water in just one year. Skip the rinse with Finish to save our water. Oh, oh, oh. Had enough? No, arthritis. Here, aspirin cream arthritis. Prescription strength reduces inflammation. Thank the gods. Don't thank them too soon. Kick pain in the Asper cream. If you're always asking, where next? Capital One has a new class of travel card for you. Venture X. Earn 10x miles on hotels and 5x miles on flights booked through Capital One Travel. Venture X. What's in your wallet? Welcome back. 16 minutes after 5 o'clock. Instagram introducing several new direct messaging features. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Instagram is rolling out new messaging features. Users will have the option of replying to DMs directly from their feed without clicking on their inbox. You can also send song previews in 30-second clips. Samsung is launching a new program that will allow users of some Galaxy devices to make their own repairs. The company will offer access to approved parts, tools, and detailed repair guides. Samsung says it's working with iFixit, online repair community, to implement the plan. Finally, Alexa's new features aimed at saving you money. Amazon says the voice assistant can now notify Prime members up to a day ahead of specific discounts on items in their cart or their wish list. Users can then ask Alexa to buy those items. I had a joke about a discount, but uh, it felt like a cheap shot. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Mm. Do you like the joke? It is all right. Yeah, it's okay. Or, you know, 17 minutes after 5 o'clock on a Friday wasn't too bad. Yeah. We'll give you props, Andrew Denver. What do you think, Stephen? Well, you know, speaking of gifts, I, I bought stuff a gift this morning, and uh, I actually and I, I thought the gift was in the bag and realized <laughs> the stuff was opening it. I may have left the gift actually out home. April and, Fool's! And I actually may have thrown uh, it away, so I have to check the trash can when I get home. But let's get a look wow. at our roads, because what I want to do is check the roads right now, get a quick look around Transguide 35 at Ben's Engelman. Lots of these shots aren't really showing any problems out on the roadways this early in the morning, and that's some good news, just a few minutes after 5 a.m. But that doesn't mean that the issues aren't out there. Unfortunately, we have to bring your attention right over here to the northwest side. 1604 in those westbound lanes, not looking good. We do have a crash that came in a little bit earlier this morning right there at Tradesmen, and you can see that buildup of traffic, yellow and orange, already starting to build out there. So again, not a place you want to be this morning. We'll watch it closely, and if it's still there, we'll start looking at different routes for you to take. Let's take a drive over here, 410 eastbound at Broadway, Broadway Street. Pardon me. This has pretty stayed much stayed consistent, though we do have a little chunk of red that's already starting to build in that direction. So nothing drastic yet, but of course, always make sure that you are driving carefully. One less look around the road shows that things are moving, guys. That's good news for a Friday. For a Friday, for your birthday, for Aww. Fiesta. Yeah. <laughs> and Stephen, you, uh, you're one step ahead of me. I didn't get a present for Steph. But happy oh. birthday. Thank you. So you're doing better than oh, I. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to brag. Everybody's so, in know. the same color scheme, so I'm happy about that. Yes, mm -hmm. the Steph's color scheme. I like it. Peach. Yeah. Is that what we're going to go with? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Steph, I can get you a cold front in the forecast. <laughs> Ooh, that like, is oh, a gift. That, good. that right? is a gift. Okay, good. Uh, let's talk uh, about March. Let's look back. We are now officially into April. March was a dry month for us, okay? We, we only picked up 32 hundredths of an inch of rain. That's about two inches below average. We need to do better than that uh, this time of year if we're going to get out of this drought. And we certainly did not. Only about four and a half inches since October 28th at San Antonio International. So we are very much in a dry spell here and the drought monitor shows that. As we look across the state, all these reds and maroons, those represent exceptional and extreme drought and it really is starting to set in here across South Texas. Not a good situation. That's why we've been in those fire threats. It's seemingly 
almost every day now, gusty winds, we get dry air, and with these drought conditions, fires can spread very, very rapidly. So we need some rain. There are a couple chances here in our forecast. Right now, we're sitting at 54 degrees, 43 the dew point. Northerly winds at about 6 miles per hour. Those winds switch around to the south a little bit later today. 47 Kerrville, 53 in Uvalde, 55 Pleasanton. You got 52 in Holotus in the 40s around Bull Verde. Another great morning in the forecast calls for those temperatures to be up close to 60 by 9 o'clock. And then by noontime, 73, those winds really starting to pick up. So it will be a somewhat windy day. Just a heads up there. Mostly sunny skies as we head into the afternoon. We should top out close to 84 degrees and uh, humidity tries to come back in at least a little bit late in the day. Wind gusts, I think, will be in the range of 20 to 25. We see that throughout the day, even into tonight. So if you're heading out to any of those Fiesta events, just know it is going to be a little bit windy. Futurecast shows quiet conditions today. We're not going to see much cloud cover at all. But as we get into tomorrow morning, here come the clouds. And a weak front tries to work in. Doesn't do a whole lot for us. Does bring maybe, maybe a shower. But don't expect much out of it. That front kind of falls apart. And we're still going to be a warm, see a warm afternoon on Saturday. Clouds may briefly try to come back in Sunday morning and then uh, more sun uh, by Sunday afternoon. Uh, this weekend in general, it's going to be fairly warm. 87 Saturday, 86 Sunday. We get some gusty winds again on Saturday, Sunday too. It feels like that has really been a theme so far this spring and the morning lows will be in the 50s. Uh, as we look down the line here, let's go into Monday because Monday is kind of a busy day here weather wise. And then also, of course, we have the river parade. This is five o'clock on Monday. I think we start off with some clouds and drizzle in the morning and then maybe a few showers by the afternoon. It's going to be a mostly cloudy day. Then a frontal boundary tries to work in. As it does, if there's enough moisture in place and the, the atmosphere lines up the way I think it will, uh, we may get some storms. About a 40% chance is what we're putting in there now. And if we do see some storms, there's an opportunity for a couple strong ones. Something to watch late Monday night. This is Tuesday, 1 a.m., early, early Tuesday morning. And then by Tuesday morning, I think all the rain's moving away. We clear out. And Tuesday promises to be a hot day. We're going to get some westerly winds, and temperatures will really crank up. So here's how it looks in the seven-day forecast. We mentioned the weekend, 82 Monday, with a 30% chance of some showers, then a 40% chance of some storms late. 92 on Tuesday, but a front comes in on Wednesday, and this is a good looking front for April. Knocks temperatures back down 79 on Thursday after starting off at 52. What if I told you for Battle of Flowers, we'd be in the 70s, clear skies, some low humidity. How would you feel about that? That is awesome. I like can't go, make any promises yet. Go over there and give trending. you a hug. Hey, see that? <laughs> Thank you. Stuff. Thank There's you. <laughs> I will take the 70s for Battle of Flowers. That is awesome. Yes, we'll see. Well, it, it's going to be close. Okay. Yeah, but I think we'll, it'll be nice. We'll take it. Yep. Thank you, Justin. And you think I spent like $100 on you. Oh. oh wow. Uh-uh. <laughs> well, hold on. Wait, it's April you, Fool's Day. Were you, were you paying the Spurs to win? Uh. Um, hey, hey, man, I think we'll have a victory on your birthday. Then whoo, whoo. <laughs> 523 and 53 degrees. They should. They're playing Portland for crying out loud. I hope so. Well, coming up next in your morning spotlight, Brian May of Queen talks about his concert raising money for Ukraine relief and Joan Collins telling her life story on film. Two British showbiz legends are in the news, a musician raising money for Ukraine and an actress telling her remarkable life story. We're going to hear both in today's Hollywood Minute. Here's CNN's David Daniel. Queen and Paul Rogers Live in Ukraine 2008 has gotten a timely re-release. Legendary Queen guitarist Brian May says he wishes he could do more to help the devastated country. The overriding feeling I have is anger and helplessness, you know, the powerlessness. So we had the, 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 the concert already mixed and filmed and whatever, and so we said let's just put it up and all the proceeds can go to to Kharkiv. The concert is posted on YouTube with a donate button. So far, it's raised more than $5 million for people affected by the war in Ukraine. Ready, I'm going to start. The new documentary, This is Joan Collins, just debuted on the streaming service BritBox. It does not cover her entire career because the iconic 88-year-old actress is still active with multiple film and TV projects in the works. I mean, life is for living and um, I want to take a big bite out of it before the curtain comes down. <laughs> In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel.
527, 54 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, more than 30 countries are meeting today to talk about actions to get gas prices to go back down. We're going to tell you what they're planning to do. Plus a recall on a popular brand of peanut butter. What you need to know about some Skippy products. It's Fiesta time. Yay! Friday Fiesta. What more do you want? Well, medals. We got them. <laughs> <laughs> KSET medals for the 2022. Uh, they will be announced later, so you're going to have to keep watching. GMSA will tell you when and where you can get them. Making headlines this morning, more than 30 countries are addressing the rising cost of gas today. We'll tell you what options they're considering that could lower prices at the pump. And taking a look outside with live cam. Some people might say it's a little chilly this morning. I say it's nice and cool for now. And if your alarm is going off, it's probably not April Fool's. You probably need to get up and go to work. Because yeah. it is April 1st, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, your boss may not think that's a great joke yeah. to be like, hey, I'm not coming in. <laughs> it's or like, that no, you be, have to come in. The, the joke could be on you. Oh. When it's all over. Mm -hmm. so. No, we don't want those kind of jokes. <laughs> no. Nah. Ha happy times, because it's Friday and it's Fiesta, and the weather's going to work out. We're excited about that, Justin. Oh, yeah, everything's coming together beautifully. Let me move out of the way, because i got to show you this Aww. Fiesta picture. Uh, that's Pumba. He's a hairless Chinese crested who's fiesta ready. I'd say so. <laughs> uh, love the hat. Also, I feel like my hair looked like that earlier this morning. Uh, but you know what? He, he's looking great. Well, Pumbaa, you just needed, you're a, awesome. you needed a fiesta hat. I know, he just covered fine. up, right? Uh -huh. uh, Pumba, we love you. We love the pictures. Uh, send them in. Send in your fiesta shots. We've got some more coming up. We're going to show you. But thank you so much for that picture. Here's what to expect today. Uh, we're going to expect uh, mostly sunny and windy conditions. That's kind of the main storyline this afternoon. And then this weekend, nice mornings, warm afternoons. I think you'll like the weekend forecast. Next week, there's a lot to look at. We've got some rain chances, some hot weather, and then a cold front. All in one week, it's going to bring a variety of weather. Temperature-wise, right now, 54 Gonzales, 55 Pleasanton, 47 in Kerrville. We like to see the 40s on the map. It's good. A crisp morning in a lot of spots, uh, although it does go all the way up to 60 down there at Stinson. Your pollen count, this is yesterday's numbers. Oak was up there. I would expect that oak's going to stay somewhat elevated next couple of weeks. You can just see the trees start to produce all that pollen. It is that time of year. And our forecast for today, we're going to make it uh, into the 60s by 9 o'clock, 70s by 11 o'clock, noontime 73. Winds do pick up, especially during the afternoon. Could see some gusts 20 to 25. Your high temperature today right around 84 with uh, southerly winds in that 10 to 20 mile per hour range. Okay, Stephen, I've seen some flashing lights here on TransGuy. What's going on? It's been for a little while now, Justin. 410 at Broadway is one of the problem spots. Let's get a closer look and bring you in because we do see that we have first responders still out there and almost looks like a portion of 410 has been blocked off as they're investigating a crash that was reported earlier this morning. Not the only crash. However, it, we may have some good news to talk about here. This crash off the northwest side over on the northwest side, pardon me, is at Loop 1604 westbound at Tradesman Drive. I was checking the TransGuide cameras and and it doesn't appear that we're seeing as many flashing lights out there, but what we're still spotting is a slight slowdown in those westbound lanes of 1604 getting onto I-10. So you got to watch out there. Make sure that you are driving carefully. Still pretty dark outside. Uh, taking that drive again, 410 eastbound at Broadway Street is where we have that crash we showed you just now on TransGuide. Uh, that slowdown that we had been spotting looks like it's improving slightly, but not uh, incredibly. But you got to make sure you're driving carefully and watch for those first responders. And keep in mind, drivers over here towards the game, you are going to be seeing some bridge work that should be wrapping up by 6 a.m. Keep in mind, this has been current until and we'll be wrapping today. Actually, I just saw some of the flashing lights out there. There is a full closure of the eastbound westbound there at I-10 from FM 1518. Traffic in the meantime is being diverted into the frontage road. But good news is it's not really impacting those travel times. 29 minutes from Seguin, not that bad right now to downtown SA. 21 minutes, Lavernia coming into those northbound lanes and 28 driving in from Flotusville. We'll keep a close eye on the roads and have more updates coming up in the next few minutes. Steph. Thank you, Steven. New this morning, San Antonio police believe two teenagers may be victims of the same gunman. Officers found both of them suffering from gunshot wounds at two different locations on the city's west side. Katrina Weber is at the corner of Culebra and Callahan Roads with a live report. And Katrina, we understand that's where they found one victim, but it's not where the shooting happened. Well, that's correct. Police tell us that a teenage boy showed up at this gas station with a gunshot wound in his arm, but he told them that he was shot at a different location, a nearby apartment complex. 
Well, as it turns out, officers were already there at that apartment complex just down the street in the 5600 block of Culebra, and they were investigating. They had found a different teen, a different gunshot wound victim, uh, a 16-year-old boy who had been shot in the head. Now, according to police, it seems that both of these teens were shot before 1.30 this morning by someone with a rifle dressed all in black. That shooter got away. Both victims were treated for their wounds. Police say the teen who was shot in the head was in critical condition as he left for a hospital. Now, this is all still under investigation, so we don't know yet what led to this violence or anything else about the uh, shooter involved. Reporting live on the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. In response to President Biden's plans to release oil from the national reserves to help with gas prices, dozens of other countries are meeting today to talk about doing the same thing. And as CNN's Amy Kiley reports, that's not the only big news this morning about cutting fuel costs. The bottom line is if we want lower gas prices, we need to have a more oil supply right now. The International Energy Agency says that's the reason for today's meeting. The group has 31 member countries. U.S. officials say those countries are considering joining the U.S. in tapping into their oil reserves. The question will be uh, about a collective release in that context. But some of the world's largest oil producers are not members of that group. We continue to engage with non-IEA uh, members, China and other countries around uh, their uh, reserves, and will continue to do so. But the immediate, uh, the, uh, the immediate step at hand will be the IEA. More news about gasoline this morning comes from the U.S. Department of Transportation. It's unveiling tougher fuel economy standards. That means beginning with the 2026 models, vehicles will get more miles per gallon than older ones that were under the older standards. Of course, some new cars won't need gas at all. Many automakers are transitioning toward electric vehicles. Charging an electric vehicle is so much cheaper than filling up your gas vehicle, especially now. EVs rely on the U.S. power grid. They don't need gas. That makes EVs pretty appealing to some people right now. Many countries also don't want to rely on oil from Russia while it's attacking Ukraine. It will also make us, as a nation, energy independent. It will make a great step toward that goal. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. In Washington, a bill to lower insulin costs is headed for an uphill battle in the Senate after passing in the House. The Affordable Insulin Now Act would lower the price of insulin and cap it at $35 a month. That goes for both private health insurance plans and Medicare. According to a 2020 Kaiser Family Foundation report, the current cost for insulin is between more than $300 to $1,000 per month. The bill comes as Democrats' domestic agenda known as Build Back Better, which includes drug reform provision, is stalled in Congress. The U.S. Navy is naming a ship after late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The USNS Ruth Bader Ginsburg will be a John Lewis class replenishment oil ship. They will use it to refuel carrier strike groups at sea. The ships are traditionally named after civil and human rights activists. Ginsburg fought for women's rights up until her death in 2020. She died at the age of 87 from complications from metastatic pancreatic cancer. And time now is 538 and 53 degrees for now. Still ahead, Honda wants you to buy their used cars that are a decade old. We'll tell you what incentives they're using to get you to purchase one of those babies. Also next, you've probably heard about Bruce Willis stepping away from acting after being diagnosed with aphasia, we're going to tell you about his conditions that affects about a million people in the U.S. And outside with live cam again, today is another huge day. We kicked off Fiesta with Fiesta Fiesta last night. We've got oyster break today. We've got the taste of New Orleans today. A lot of other Fiesta activities going on. Fiesta in full-fledged party time. Bruce Willis is stepping away from acting. After being diagnosed with aphasia, it's a condition that affects about a million people in the U.S. CNN's Mandy Gaither has more on how it impacts a person's life. A heartbreaking announcement made by the family of a well-known actor, Bruce Willis, stepping away from the career that has meant so much to him after being diagnosed with aphasia. Aphasia is the inability to communicate or difficulty using our language to speak, to read, 
write or simply comprehend or understand what people are saying. Dr. Babek Tusi, a neurologist specialist at Cleveland Clinic, says aphasia can happen suddenly after a stroke or brain injury. He says people with this type tend to respond well to speech and language therapy, but the other progressive type of this disease causes a gradual deterioration of brain tissue. Tusi says there's no cure and no medication that treats it. It's all about finding new normal in communication day-to-day -day activities. Tusi says early symptoms include trouble finding words, which gets more common, substituting or making up words, talking around words, using abnormally short phrases, and difficulty reading and writing. Not being able to express yourself efficiently uh, sometimes make you feel present. Tusi says aphasia can also cause frustration and stress in the patient, which is why it's important for them to work on new strategies to communicate. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. 543, 53 degrees. And coming up next, an important recall regarding some Skippy peanut butter products. In your morning consumer headlines, Honda has figured out a way to deal with the supply chain issues. They are selling older cars. The automaker announced it will now sell vehicles that are up to 10 years old as part of its certified pre-owned program. The company used to cover pre-owned cars no older than five years. The new expansion includes Honda's luxury brand Acura vehicles. The decade-old cars will be covered under the new Honda True Used and Acura Precision Used categories and will come with benefits like a limited warranty, complimentary oil change, and emergency roadside assistance. Skippy recalling over 100,000 pounds of peanut butter because it says the jars may contain small steel fragments. Skippy's parent company, Hormel Foods, just announced the recall. They say it involves more than 9,300 cases of select Skippy reduced fat creamy peanut butter, reduced fat chunky peanut butter, and creamy peanut butter blended with plant protein. The jars may contain a small piece of stainless steel from manufacturing equipment. The company has received no complaints, and that customers should check their website for more info if you have any of that peanut butter that's a part of the recall, Hormel says, you can return it to the store for an exchange. Are you not a fan of a recent furniture purchase from Ikea? Well, you're in luck. The Swedish furniture company will pay you for those items. It's called the Buy Back and Resell Program, and it's now a permanent part of the company in its 37 U.S. stores. It only applies to personally used furniture that is fully assembled and functional. It cannot be modified or altered. So each item will be inspected, and if approved, the customer gets store credit. Those approved resale items will be in as-is section in stores at a discounted price. Maybe you can trade them in for like some Swedish meatballs or something. Well, I mean, maybe if it's a, it's a very uh, cheap piece of furniture, maybe. That'd be good. But maybe a couple of servings of meatballs. Swap right there. <laughs> All right, let's check in on the traffic. We've had some problems so far this morning. What do they look like now? It looks like we finally have some good news to talk about here, David. Right now, I-10 at ProBand traffic is moving. We are seeing people navigate through a lot of these trans guide cameras without any problems. Now, there were some issues that were reported a little bit earlier in the newscast. Thankfully, those issues look like they have cleared out just in time as we're inching closer into that 6 a.m. Uh, morning rush hour. This crash was over on the northwest side, uh, impacting the westbound lanes of 1604. Small stretch of yellow, so we still have a little bit of traffic that remains in that direction. So drive carefully. But uh, we are we do have more good news to talk about here on 410 eastbound at Broadway Street, where we had a second crash that was causing a pretty big slowdown for drivers in those eastbound lanes of 410. But the good news is, again, that is cleared out. And as we get that wide bird's eye view of the map, we're seeing a lot more green on the screen which is what we'd like to see. And as for these drivers here at Transguide, they're seeing a lot of pavement out there, but it does look like just now US 90 at 36. Looks like there could be a stalled vehicle there. We'll check that out and find out how it impacts the morning commute coming up a little later on. Guys. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Oh, that's cute behind you, Justin. <laughs> yeah, we got another Fiesta picture for you. This is uh, coming in from Christina, the 2020 uh, 2022 Kinder Fiesta Duchess Sloan. I guess that's Sloan there. Beautiful shot. We love the. We love the Fiesta stuff that's going on across town, and we love seeing your pictures as always. You can send those in. You can do that, by the way, through the KSAT weather app. Send in those pictures, and uh, we'll show them here. Uh, rain chances. This is kind of the big story, right? We need more rain in the forecast. There is a small opportunity on Saturday morning, and then we get to some better chances Monday and Monday night. Maybe a few thunderstorms mixed in there, too. That's 
uh, time frame that we'll have to watch because it's the time of year where we could see a couple strong ones. Uh, we'll jump into that forecast here in just a second. Right now, 54 degrees, dew point is at 43, northerly winds at about 6 miles per hour. A comfortable morning. There are some 40s on the map as we speak. 44 in Kerrville, 42 Fredericksburg, everyone else primarily in the 50s. And as we look closer in here, 43 Bernie stage, one of the cooler spots. 52 Hondo, 54 Castroville, 50 over at Randolph. And the forecast for today will get us up into the 70s by lunchtime. 73 degrees here in San Antonio. Some mid 70s as you go south, a little cooler as you work north. And then by the afternoon, we're all the way up to 84 for a high here in town. Lots of 80s on the map. Pretty similar to yesterday, just a couple degrees warmer than yesterday. More wind today. We're going to see some gusts 20 to 25. Yesterday, we got a reprieve from the wind. That was so nice. It's back today. And uh, speaking of those gusty winds, how will, uh, will it affect the golfers at the Valero Texas Open? That's underway. First round was yesterday. Today, they are going to have to contend with more wind. Winds drop off a little bit on Saturday, then pick back up on Sunday. But we've got 80s uh, basically across the board here as far as temperatures go. Not bad weather for uh, golfing, and there should be no interruptions uh, for thunderstorms or anything like that. Our, our next chance of storms, as we said, comes on Monday. So let's look at the future cast here. And today is very quiet. I will tell you there is an opportunity for a shower early tomorrow morning. The window is small. If we do see anything, it'll be extremely light. So we're not going to worry too much about that. Weak front falls apart. Doesn't really do much for our forecast. By 6 p.m. tomorrow, it's uh, mostly sunny. Clouds may build back in briefly on Sunday, but then we're back into a warm afternoon, as we said. Uh, and then as we look at Monday, uh, here comes our next storm system. We could get some drizzle and clouds in the morning, maybe a couple showers in the afternoon, then an opportunity for a few thunderstorms late Monday night into early Tuesday. Still a couple questions there. Will the cap hold? If we get a good cap, we may not see all that much. Uh, but if the cap breaks, there's the opportunity for a couple of strong storms, primarily late Monday night, early Tuesday morning. We'll keep you posted. But by Tuesday morning, I think a lot of this is starting to uh, move out or later on Tuesday morning and then by Tuesday afternoon we're looking at hot conditions and clear skies. In fact, temperatures will go as warm as the low 90s on Tuesday. So a lot to look at here in the 7 day forecast. Uh, there is your chance of rain Monday. Hot Tuesday a front on Wednesday. At least that's the way it looks now and this may really cool us down as we head into the latter part of next week, which would be great timing. For Fiesta and we'll keep our fingers crossed for some rain too on Monday. We just don't want the severe stuff, right? I'm a fan of the front. I think we all I mean mm -hmm. uh, to get some good fronts in April is always a good thing. It is. Thank you, Justin. Yep. It is 552 and it is 53 degrees and it's a new month and that means a new batch of video games are headed your way. We're going to have a look at the best deals next. And we're going to have a look at some lottery numbers as we go to break. Pick three, seven, six, nine. Fireball is one. And your daily four is eight, nine, four, two. Fireball is nine. Cash five, one, four, nine, eleven, thirty-four. And your Texas two stop. 15, 17, 26, 28. Bonus ball 10. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, our ABC News exclusive interview with Oscars producer Will Packer, opening up about what happened behind the scenes after Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. His conversation with the comedian backstage, what the LAPD told them, and his reaction to everything that happened on what should have been a crowning achievement. That and so much more coming up right here on GMA. The galaxy far, far away goes portable as Star Wars The Force Unleashed arrives on the Nintendo Switch, putting players in the role of Darth Vader's secret apprentice. The Force Unleashes April 20th. Batter up, MLB The Show throws out its first pitch April 5th on Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox consoles. Uh -huh. Cat fanciers can build their own kitty corner in Cat Cafe Manager. Gameplay includes building a restaurant, solving a mystery, and of course, adopting friendly felines. The cat's out of the bag April 14th for PC and Nintendo Switch.
Happy's Humble Burger Farm could be the origin of the first-person adventure horror cooking game genre. Players must work the graveyard shift at a popular fast food joint where things can go very, very wrong. The burgers hit the grill for Nintendo Switch April 7th. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Coming up next hour, making your home more eco-friendly is easier than you might think. We'll have some tips to make it happen so you can save some money. And we're going to have the very latest on a shooting on the city's west side. We'll tell you everything we know so far about that shooting. And a look at Trans Guide as we go to break. Stephen Cavazos just said the roads are clear right now, but uh, things could happen. We'll have that for you coming up. He'll update you on the road situation. Justin Horn's got your weather. And we've got you covered for the next hour of GMSA. Two gunshot victims at two different locations, but police believe they're tied to the same incident. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. President Biden making some big moves in an effort to bring down those soaring gas prices. We'll tell you how it'll affect your wallet. And taking a look outside with live cam, there's beautiful downtown San Antonio at 53 degrees. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Friday, April 1st. No fooling. No fooling. And it's a great Friday because it's Fiesta Friday and uh -huh. the Spurs are playing tonight. And Justin says the weather's going to work out for all of that. Oh, man, it's all good all the way around. Happy birthday, Steph, by the way. Thank you. And we got to give a shout out to Azian. Azian. Also his birthday photojournalist here at KSAT. So good Happy day all the way birthday. around, right? Uh, big Friday. Big Friday. Big, big Friday. Uh, and we do have some pretty good weather. Yesterday was, would be hard to beat, but I think today's going to be close to that. As we look across the country, snow fly across the Great Lakes. Yeah, it's cold enough up there for that. That's going to move towards the uh, northeast. We had some big time storms across the east coast yesterday, some tornadoes there around the nation's capital. But here in Texas, we are enjoying some great, great weather. Temperatures this morning in the 40s in places like Kerrville, New Braunfels. We're in the low 50s here in San Antonio. I suspect we'll drop a couple more degrees before we start to rebound later this afternoon. Uh, 40s for places like Bernie, Comfort, uh, Bolverde, New Braunfels, as we said. Randolph has now dropped down to 48. So it is. Uh, Jacket weather, I suppose, this morning, but by this afternoon, it will be plenty warm. 84 degrees, the uh, high temperature around 5 o'clock. And this is the uh, Worcester Bank forecast, by the way. A lot of Fiesta events going on. There should be great weather for that. 75 at 8 o'clock, 68 by 11 o'clock. We'll call it comfortable, mostly sunny. Will be a little bit breezy today. Great looking weekend. Some changes on next week. Maybe some storms on Monday. Another cold front to talk about, too. Uh, that forecast is coming up in a bit. Let's go over to Stephen now and check in on your traffic this morning. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning, Justin. Right now, uh, things are looking fine on the roads. I wouldn't say they're great because we did have some issues out there earlier. Let's get a closer look, see how things are shaping up around town. 410 at Bandera looks like traffic is picking up in that direction. Other spots here, 410 at Morrison, a little emptier in that location. So uh, drivers aren't really going to encounter problems out on the roadway. But keep in mind, there were some issues that were detected off of 410 eastbound. And over here off 1604 in the north, Northwest side, some crashes that took a little while to clear out. So thankfully, our first responders were able to get things removed before we started seeing more people out on the road. But I just saw in the corner of my eyes some flashing lights did go off up here towards 1604 at Tradesman. We'll have to find out what's happening there. But let's go ahead and bring you in to 36th Street or here off US 90 in those westbound lanes. We're seeing an, a stalled vehicle that popped up right there. So drivers, if you're heading out in these westbound lanes, make sure that you watch out for a stalled vehicle and check your vehicles before you get out on the roadways. Uh, thankfully, no delays if you're traveling into downtown San Antonio from any of these neighboring communities. Our friends from Pleasanton have a pleasant drive for them with 28 minutes on 37 northbound Highway 90 from Castroville, just 19 minutes in those eastbound lanes, 16 minutes, little time from Lytle on 35 northbound. But again, we're going to watch the roads closely and we'll find out what's happening over there on the northwest side coming up a little bit later on in this newscast. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police say someone took aim at two teenagers at a playground. It happened overnight at a west side apartment complex. Katrina Weber is live at the corner of Culebra and Callahan where police found one of the victims. Now, Katrina, we understand one of the victims was in critical condition. Well, that's right. Police tell us it was the 16 year old who they found nearby at that apartment complex. Now, the other teen also showed up here at this gas station also looking for help. Uh, police naturally were nearby. They were working at that crime scene at the apartment complex in the 5600 block of Culebra. Police say both teens were shot by the same person. 
a man dressed all in black with a rifle. The shooter was gone when officers arrived around 1.30 this morning. They say the teen who they found at the apartment complex playground had been shot in his head. He's in, he was in critical condition when he left in an ambulance. The other victim was shot in his arm. And then again, he ran to the gas station looking for help. Police say they're still trying to find out more about this case, including why those two teens were shot. Reporting live on the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Since reopening back in June, back up in person, jury trials has been very busy at the Bear County Courthouse and Kadena Reeves Justice Center. If you have some business to conduct there or need to report to jury duty, listen up. Eric Hernandez gives us some insight on what you should know before heading down there. Crowded hallways and full parking lots. The courthouse is bustling again. This is a welcome sight for judges. Just being back in court is exciting, but at the same time, it does present challenges to have so many people coming downtown at the same time. A main challenge for many lately is finding parking. This year, the new federal courthouse just opened a few blocks away, which means more people are headed to the same area. So if you need to report to court or jury duty, here's what you should know. One, it's best you plan ahead. Get here early or you'll have to park further out. Also, if you didn't know, taking the VIA bus is an option. If you show your jury summons, the right is free. Now, as far as COVID protocols at the courthouse. We're still making sure that we're not putting too many folks in a room. We're still making sure that all the protocols that we are told to abide by, by the local health authority, that we are definitely following. Now, if you're uncomfortable with coming to jury duty, you can let court staff know and they can make accommodations to make you feel more comfortable. For GMSA, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. One man fighting for his life this morning following a shooting. It happened around 8 o'clock last night after two men got off a bus. Police say the argument began on the bus ride, then spilled into a VIA parking lot on I-35 near Crestway. During a fist fight, police say one of the men shot the other man before he ran away. Officers believe they caught up with the shooting suspect. The victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. In Houston, an off-duty Harris County Sheriff's Office deputy is dead this morning after he was shot while trying to stop suspects from stealing his catalytic converter. Now, all of this happened during a trip to the grocery store. Officers say the deputy tried to stop them before they exchanged gunfire. The deputy returned fire but was struck by a bullet and later died at the hospital. The entire incident played out in front of the deputy's wife, who remained unharmed during that situation. The suspects drove themselves to the hospital and were being treated for those gunshot wounds. And traffic tragedies continue to trend in the wrong direction, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The number of deadly crashes spiked across the country last year. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos with why San Antonio police say it's a crisis that's reaching close to home. That's right, David, Stephanie, in just the first nine months of 2021, over 30,000 deadly crashes were reported. And according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, that's uh, the highest that they've seen since 2006. And here at home, San Antonio police are also seeing record breaking numbers. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these deadly crashes that happened earlier this year. Now, SAPD responded to 205 deadly crashes last year. Actually, the data includes crashes involving pedestrians cyclists, motorcyclists and vehicles. Now I spoke to Sergeant Anthony Dimmick, who is with traffic investigation at San Antonio Police. Dimmick says oftentimes investigators learn pedestrians were killed while wearing dark clothing or not using sidewalks, and sometimes it's distracted driving or drivers not wearing a seatbelt. And a lot of that video that you just saw right there were crashes actually that occurred last year. So while it's not clear what has caused that uptake, the NHTSA reports that the increase came as more people returned to their daily lives. And of course, San Antonio police also citing alcohol and speed as other factors. They encourage anyone attending Fiesta events to plan ahead or use ride sharing services. David Steph. Thank you, Stephen. President Biden has launched the largest release ever from the U.S. Emergency Oil Reserve and challenged oil companies to drill more in an attempt to bring down gas prices that have soared in recent months, attempting to combat what he's labeled as Putin's price hike. The president says the U.S. will release roughly one million barrels of oil per day from the nation's strategic petroleum reserve over the next six months. Biden says there is no firm answer to when gas prices could decline as a result of his move. However, the president thinks Americans could pay 10 to 35 cents a gallon less at the pump in the weeks ahead. Some lawmakers have criticized Biden's action to tap the reserve without first taking steps to increase American energy production. 
this Fiesta Friday. And you want medals? We have them. Well, not me, David, or Stephen, or Justin, but our KSET team will have them. And later today, you can, later in the newscast, you can find out where and when you can pick up your 2022 KSET Fiesta medal. They're cool. We got one. <laughs> you got, did you get your one? Got one. Yeah, I need to get mine. Just to see what it looked like. It's yeah. pretty, pretty, pretty sweet. Yeah, so. it's pretty. Keep your eyes open and your ears open for that music. Yes. That's the indication something fiesta is happening. Yeah, we'll tell you real soon. 609, 53 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, there's a new messaging feature set to roll out on Instagram. We're going to have those details right after the break. And outside with live cam, everything started last night with Fiesta Fiesta. That was a party. Big party downtown. Weather perfect for that. Weather's good for today for a lot of events going on today and out all through the weekend. Justin Horn, good forecast coming up. Welcome back. 13 minutes after 6 o'clock. Instagram rolling out new messaging features. Users will have the option of replying to DMs directly from their feed without clicking on their inbox. You can also send song previews in 30 second clips. Alexa's new feature is aimed at saving you money. Amazon says the voice assistant can now notify Prime members up to a day ahead of specific discounts on items in their cart or on their wish list. Users can then ask Alexa to buy those items. Well, that's dangerous. <laughs> <Could> <laughs> Makes it very easy. Have you ever let Alexa buy anything for you? No. No, tell them it'll show up at your front door. Yeah. Um, it was good this morning, then it was bad this morning, and now we don't know what it is this morning <laughs> on the roads. We're Where just saying, we? we also have to say Alexa very quietly because we don't know how many are going off oh, right yeah. now, right? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, that'd Sorry. be great. Just start yelling yeah. and sometimes Alexa starts <laughs> buying stuff that they uh -oh. didn't know they bought. Oh, no, don't no, no. charge wow. it to us, please. Exactly. Uh, US 90 36. Okay, so things actually were uh, quiet for a little while. And what we're seeing here, although we are spotting these flashing lights, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a big issue. It's actually some relief that the driver is now getting from possibly a Texas hero truck or a first responder. Now, this is that stalled vehicle that we told you about earlier. So again, drive carefully. What we're seeing here from the show, that's off on the shoulder lane. However, a lot of these vehicles that are moving are a little bit too close for comfort. So make sure you give the plenty of room, move over or slow down. That's the law. Let's go ahead and take a look because that's in the westbound lanes of 30 West, pardon me, US 90 westbound at 36 Street. So again, watch out in that direction, uh, but also be on the lookout a little bit later this morning. There's still some construction that's going to be happening out here toward 410. Starts at 9 in the morning and will wrap at 5 in the afternoon. This will can end on April 4th, so we have to get through it for the next few days. But keep in mind, it's the full closure of the southbound bypass ramp to West Military Drive right over here. So you can expect to see some crews out there a little bit later on as the morning does pick up. But right now, we are still in good shape. Lots of green on the screen. And again, some good news. US 90 at 36. Uh, we are seeing some driver receive the help that they need and we will continue to watch the roads closely. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. And the kids on the bus will need a light jacket, probably. I would say so. Yeah, it's about that time to head out the door this morning if you're heading to the bus stop. Uh, light jacket's probably not a bad idea. And uh, of course, my bus isn't showing up. Uh -oh. Why does that happen sometimes? Anyway, there would be a bus like right there. I miss the bus, clearly. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, here's what I can tell you. A little chilly this morning. We got 50s and then uh, we'll get some 80s coming up this afternoon. Let's talk about right now. Uh, it is 52 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 44 and we've got light winds. Uh, 42 Fredericksburg, 43 in Kerrville, 49 in New Braunfels. So yeah, that's that's jacket weather for sure. Uh, but just like yesterday, we get that rapid rise in temperatures. Uh, and we'll see a pretty warm afternoon. Uh, a little closer look here. We're still in the 40s around Bernie Stage, Bulverde, and New Braunfels. 48 at Randolph, 56 Port SA, 55 right now at Castroville. Mostly clear skies. By 9 a.m., we're in the 60s. By noontime, we're in the 70s. Winds do start to pick up during the afternoon, so it will be somewhat of a windy day. And then eventually, temperatures get all the way up to 84 for a high, with southerly winds probably in that range of 10 to 20 miles per hour. Gusts will be in the 20 to 25 mile per hour range. So it's one of those days where it's not overly windy, but it's just kind of a sort of a nuisance wind. You'll get those gusts from time to time that really do pick up. Now it does bring in a little more moisture, and that's a good thing. We've got dew points rising slightly, some 40s out there. Now it drops off in the hill country, but dew points are just high enough 
to where we don't have to worry too much about the fire concern today. But with those gusty winds, it's still something to watch. Uh, and it's just been so dry. The month of March, we only picked up 32 hundredths of an inch of rain. That's two inches below average. Our driest March since 2011, and the drought monitor just looks awful for most of the state. Uh, extreme and exceptional drought continues to work in across South Texas. And as long as we don't see rain, it's just going to get worse. So our rain chances, hopefully we get some on Monday. That's sort of a, the window that we're watching right now. The future cast does show as we get into tomorrow morning, a slight chance for a shower. But this shower, if, if we see it at all, is going to be very quick moving and very, very light. So it doesn't really do much for us. There is a weak frontal battery that comes through. It falls apart tomorrow afternoon. It'll be warm. You probably won't even notice that front. By Sunday morning, clouds build in briefly. And then we've got another warm afternoon. So the weekend forecast in general looks great. 87 Saturday, partly cloudy, 86 on Sunday with some gusty winds. Now let's talk about Monday and that chance for rain. Here comes our next storm system. Some clouds and drizzle early. And then as this front comes in, there's a there is a shot for some storms late Monday night, early on Tuesday, 40% chance. If we do see some storms, opportunity for a couple strong ones mixed in there. And then by Tuesday morning, a lot of this is progressing east and southeast. And then we're going to deal with some hot temperatures by Tuesday afternoon. So the seven day lays it out for you here. 84 today, 87 Saturday, 86 Sunday, a little cooler with more cloud cover on Monday and that chance for rain. And we'll watch that, of course, with the river parade Monday evening. Temperatures skyrocket on Tuesday, 92, but then a front comes through and it cools us down. 85 Wednesday, we're back into the 70s on Thursday with cool mornings and low humidity. Nice. Thank you for that cool front. You got it. Just for your birthday, Steph. Awesome. Did you ever have to walk back in the house and tell your mom you missed the bus? No. You never, you never did that? I was, I was a spoiled child. I got a ride to school. So Justin, I did, did you ever do that? Did you have to, did yeah. you miss the bus? <gasps> I'm a pretty punctual guy. Yeah, yes, he is. Ooh, I'm the only one that. <laughs> Did you miss a bus? Uh oh. <laughs> 619 and 53 degrees pretty much tells you what you need to know about me right there. Yeah, but you drove a bus too. Well, that's how you don't miss it. There you go. You drive it. <laughs> and go first, go. The silver and black have another opportunity to move closer to the play in bracket for the playoffs. We're going to tell you how the Western Conference is shaping up as we get closer to the end of the regular season. Faces of Fiesta is powered by Silverado and your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Hi, I'm Mackenzie Tijirina and I'm La Reina de la Feria de las Flores 2022. Viva Fiesta! Meet this year's Reina de la Feria de las Flores. I attend Antonian College Preparatory High School. I'm a senior there. I'm going to go play volleyball at the University of Texas at El Paso. Mackenzie comes from a long line of Fiesta royalty. I've been in Fiesta all my life, basically, born and raised in San Antonio. My mom was a past Feria queen. My grandpa was Rafael 48. My uncle was Rafael 70, and my cousin was also a Feria queen. She enjoys the visits to area schools with El Rafael and brings her message to the kids. I hope to get my message across to all the kids about following their dreams and doing whatever their heart wants, but also giving scholarships to kids around San Antonio. I've raised over $65,000, and I hope to give all that money back to kids and get them to college. And when she's not reigning as queen. I play volleyball. I've been playing since I was in second grade, so that's pretty much a lot of what I do. I love volunteering. I've also done a lot through Antonian. I founded a sewing club, um, making blankets and hats. We donate a lot of stuff to different hospitals and organizations around San Antonio. Trilogy for COPD. <coughs> Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on. If you've been playing down your COPD, it's a new dawn, it's a new day. It's time to make a stand. Start a new day with Trilogy. And I'm feeling good. No once daily COPD medicine has the power to treat COPD in as many ways as Trilogy. With three medicines in one inhaler, Trilogy helps people breathe easier and improves lung function. It also helps prevent future flare-ups. Trilogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trilogy more than prescribed. Trilogy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes, or eye pain occur. Take a stand and start a new day with Trilogy. Oh, 
Ask your doctor about Once Daily Trilogy and save at Trilogy.com. And coming up on Good Morning America, Oscar producer Will Packer is sharing what happened just moments after Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Academy Awards in an ABC News exclusive interview. That's coming up at 7 a.m. right here on KSET. Hey, the San Antonio Spurs are going to go to work again tonight to try and solidify their claim on that play-in spot. Right now, they are neck and neck with the Lakers for the 10th spot in the West. The Lakers got crushed by Utah last night. Oh, too bad. So the Spurs still very much alive in the hunt for the postseason. The silver and black missed a golden opportunity to upset number two-seeded team in the West, the Memphis Grizzlies. The good news, the Spurs are playing the Portland Trailblazers tonight, who've had... Ah, some troubles as of late. The Spurs have had a lot of success against the Trailblazers this season. That game is set for 7.30 tonight at the AT&T Center, and I know somebody who's going to be there, so they better win. <laughs> Meanwhile, former Spur great Manu Ginobili is getting some much-deserved recognition. Manu, 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 Manu. Reports are saying that he is headed to the Hall of Fame. He should be. We'll have more on that coming up in our next half hour of GMSA. Goes One of your all-time favorites, right? Yes. And you're going to be there tonight, right? Yes. Ooh, Spurs, pressure's on. It's her birthday. She's going to be there. I suggest you pull off a victory. I hope so. Go Spurs, go. Time now, 626 and 53 degrees for now. And much more to come on GMSA, including the latest on a shooting on the city's west side. We'll tell you everything we know so far about that shooting. <laughs> it's time for our medal giveaway. We are going to announce this later in the newscast. They have to keep oh. watching. Ha <laughs> ha. I thought we were going to find out right there. I thought you this heard, was a, You heard the music. I did. And you thought it was time. Everybody starts dancing. People at home probably get up off the couch or out of bed and start dancing. They start when dancing? Do you think like, so? It's just like get you fired up. For well, we've been up for a while, so that's why we're dancing. Yeah. But yeah, stay with us. It's 626 right oh. now, but we will have where and when you can get them pretty soon. They're looking for a gunman who took aim at two teams on a playground. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story coming up. Outside with live cam, if your alarm is going up, jump out of bed. Get up, get fired up. It is a Fiesta Friday. Ooh, and it's a gorgeous day today. <laughs> yes, you're right. It is Friday. I was like, wow, you want to, I wish you were around like calling me like at 2.30 in the morning with that same enthusiasm. That is awesome. <laughs> Fired up for yeah. Fiesta Friday. I mean, it's true. It's Friday. Mm. It's Fiesta Friday. Yeah. The Spurs are playing. It's awesome. I appreciate your positivity, but I got to tell you, it's not always that easy. Fight the alarm. I wanted to just kind of throw it against the wall. Yeah. Well. But yeah. now, now I'm in the fiesta mood. See, and hopefully everybody else will be too. David's bringing the energy. Hey, uh, take a look at this KSAT Connect picture. This is awesome. We're getting a great, uh, great number of fiesta pictures, and uh, this is a good one. This uh, sent in by Christina out of San Antonio. She says, "Viva! Love the hat, love the spirit, and uh, maybe an adult beverage here too." Hey, it's uh, it is fiesta, right? Uh, we appreciate the picture as always. Thank you so much for sending that in and uh, keep them keep them coming. Here's what to expect uh, next couple days. Mostly sunny and windy today. We're going to see some gusts 20 to 25 as we get into the afternoon and this weekend. Some nice mornings, warm afternoons uh, should all in all be pretty nice. And then by next week, we do have a rain chance on Monday, then hot temperatures Tuesday and then a frontal boundary Wednesday. So a lot to look at in the seven day forecast. Pollen count. This is yesterday's numbers. 260 for Oak, it was moderate, Mold Juniper, Hackberry, all in the low category. Uh, we'll see where we land today, but we know the Oak numbers are probably going to stay elevated at least for the next month or so. You can just see the trees really starting to go there with the, uh, the Oak. Uh, temperatures right now, 43 Kerrville, 49 New Braunfels, 53 in Hondo. 52 Holotus, 41 Burning Stage, 47 right now in Bandera. If you're heading out to Oyster Bank tonight, we do eventually make it into the 80s. Yes, it is chilly right now, but by this afternoon, nice and warm. 75 by 8 p.m. and then very comfortable as things are winding down this evening with uh, temperatures in the upper 60s. Will it be a comfortable drive to work? That's the next question. Let's check in with Steven for the latest there. A little bit of a chilly start, and you know what else is looking cool? These roads here off US 90 at 36. We did have some problems out there. If you are just waking up, 
up with us. Thankfully, you're not seeing any flashing lights, uh, but what we're seeing is some smooth traffic in this direction. There was a stalled vehicle and thankfully that driver received some help from possibly a first responder or a text out hero truck. Keep in mind stalls right now are the trending problem that we've been seeing throughout the morning. US 90 westbound at 36 is where that stall was picked up. So again, we're not seeing it on the trans guide camera anymore. We're going to remove that from our map. However, we did have to put this new guy right over here. You loop 410 eastbound at State Highway 151. Another stall popped up right in this direction. So you got to make sure you're checking those vehicles before you get out on the roadway, uh, but especially when it's dark outside, give those first responders plenty of room and make sure to move over our slowdown. And now we get that wide look at the map at 633. We're not spotting any significant slowdowns just yet. Earlier, we did have a few crashes that cleared out. And in fact, over here off 1604 near uh, Tradesman, uh, we did see some of the flashing lights go on again. Talk to our friends over at Transguide. They're actually just removing the barrels uh, from earlier this morning. So again, looks like things are clearing up out there. As far as those inbound times, we're pretty much green across the board. However, 24 minutes if you're traveling in from Lavernia on 87, 29 minutes right now, 281 southbound coming into downtown SA. So just make sure to take it slow out on the roads. We'll continue to watch the roads closely, but as always, make sure you do the same. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Gunshots fired on a playground have left two teenagers wounded. San Antonio police say one of them was shot in his head and is in critical condition. The other was shot in his arm. Katrina Weber is live where police found that second victim at a gas station near Calabria and Callahan Road. So, Katrina, how did he end up at the gas station? Well, he told police that he ran here looking for help. Now, the second victim, meanwhile, remained back at the scene. The police did find that 16-year-old with a gunshot wound in his head. He was still on the ground at the apartment complex playground in the 5600 block of Culebra when they found him around 1.30 this morning. The police told us it looks like the same person shot both teens, someone dressed all in black with a rifle. The victim who showed up at the gas station again was wounded in his arm and did get treated. Uh, what they don't seem to know, what police don't seem to know at this point is why that person shot both teens. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Some of the top stories we're following this morning. A second arrest has been made in connection to a string of robberies. Police say 34-year-old Ozzie Lasoya and Michael Kane were involved in seven robberies since last November. Investigators say the cases include hair salons, a fruiteria, and two small phone businesses. Some of the youngest victims were just eight and nine years old. That's according to police. Now, we're also told that surveillance video from the robberies led to the arrest. San Antonio police are investigating a deadly shooting that happened on the city's south side. Police are questioning one man in that case. A neighbor called officers after hearing an argument and then a gunshot in an upstairs apartment. This happened at a complex on Old Corpus Christi Road in Southeast Military yesterday. Police found a man with a gunshot wound to his face. He died at the scene but has not been identified. A gun was recovered from the scene. Police say the man they're questioning is in his mid to late 20s. And we are following a major development from the war in Ukraine, an urgent evacuation of people from a city described as hellscape. People have been waiting four hours in line just for bread, and they've had no running water and very little hope until now. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details. Today in Ukraine, Russia claims a humanitarian corridor will open from the besieged city of Mariupol, where an estimated 100,000 people have been trapped in a humanitarian crisis with little food, water, or electricity for weeks. Russian forces have also handed back control of the Chernobyl nuclear plant after holding the site since February. According to unconfirmed reports, Russian troops may have suffered radiation sickness after digging trenches in contaminated areas. In other areas of Ukraine, intense fighting rages on. Multiple missiles hit the capital of Kyiv Thursday, one striking while ABC's James Longman was on the air. We just heard an enormous explosion here uh, towards the north of where we're standing. And you can see there uh, deep, dark smoke rising into the, into, into the sky. Now, we're not sure what's been hit. But with Russia suffering so many setbacks, President Biden says Vladimir Putin may have placed some of his advisors under house arrest. I'm not saying this with a certainty. He seems to be self-isolated, and there's some indication that he has um, fired or put under house arrest some of his advisors. <laughs> Meanwhile, more people fleeing Ukraine are turning up on America's southern border. More than 600 are waiting at this holding area in Tijuana, Mexico, hoping to cross the border. This woman and her kids drawing Ukrainian flags. 
They've been waiting since Tuesday to enter the U.S. How hard has this been on you? <laughs> Emotionally, it was hard. Oh, we haven't been bathing. It's a very hard situation. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer headlines, the end of March marking the end of the worst quarter for stocks in two years. The Nasdaq losing more than 9% over the last three months. The S&P shedding nearly 5% and the Dow ending the quarter down 4.6%. And shortages of car parts are again forcing automakers to shut down production. Both Ford and GM now say they'll have plans. They'll have to idle plans in Michigan next week. Now, last month, Ford warned that computer chip shortages would slow the number of vehicles it could make this quarter. Yay! Fiesta's here, and there is a lot that you can do with your family this weekend if you're looking to be part of the festivities. Oyster break is one of those activities, and it kicks off this afternoon. Jonathan Coto joins us live to tell us more. I guess they got those oysters ready to uh, start uh, baking, Jonathan? Things are getting ready. There's nobody here right now but myself and photojournalist Timmy Stewart, but there will be tons of people here at St. Mary's University for the celebration, the 106th celebration of Fiesta Oyster Bake. Now, things are being set up right now. The booths are ready to go. And let me tell you, I've already made my walks around the grounds. You can expect some craft beer, some nachos, some Brazilian limonada, aguas frescas, and of course, tons and tons of oysters off at the distance. The carnival's already ready to go. And one of many stages, several stages that will be welcoming over 50 bands and entertainment, attracting more than 60,000 patrons to raise money, of course, for the St. Mary's University Student Scholarship and University Alumni Programs. Now, this is all going to be kicking off later today at 5 from 5 to 11 p.m. But of course, for more Fiesta information, all things Fiesta, you can head on over to KSAT.com. Reporting live from St. Mary's University, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And get ready, coming up after the break, we'll tell you where and when you can get your hands on a case of Fiesta Metal today. San Antonio Spurs legend Manu Ginobili getting his call to the hall. Sources are confirming earlier reports by The Athletic that the four-time NBA champion will be a first ballot member of the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame for the class of 2022, the official announcement will come Saturday at the final four of the NCAA tournament. Manu helped lead the Spurs to the championships back in 2003, 2005, 2007, 2014. He retired in 2018 after spending his entire NBA career here in San Antonio, and he's one of the most popular players ever to come out of San Antonio to play for this franchise. And he is Mr. Bob. Not too many players had their own song from all the people in the stands. Oh, yeah. He also brought the Euro step to the NBA along the way, helping his country, Argentina, win an Olympic gold medal. So congratulations to Manu, 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 Manu. How many Spurs had their own song? How many players in the NBA have their own song? I only know that one. That's it. That's right. See? Very special. Time now, 640 and 53 degrees for now. Making your home more eco-friendly is easier than you might think. After the break, some simple tips to make it happen and how it can help save you some money. And welcome back into 644. We all want to be more environmentally friendly, but it can be hard to know where to start, especially when it comes to our homes. In this morning's Ask Angie segment, we have some tips for eco-friendly home projects. One key to sustainability when updating your home is using what you already have. Reusing and repurposing existing materials in your home not only can save the planet, it also could save you money. Before starting a new project, look around your home, take an assessment, what materials can be reused or upcycled. For an example, an old dresser from the bedroom can be turned into a unique vintage bathroom sink base. So update existing parts of your home for a fresh look by reusing materials you already have instead of replacing your cabinets altogether. try giving them a fresh coat of paint and if your fabric couch is wearing out first try giving it a deep clean and then deep healing the fabric you would be surprised how new your existing items can look when given a little tlc water conservation projects are another great place to start when making your home more eco-friendly 
Not only will you save water, but you could also lower your bills at the same time. A lot of people assume conserving water simply means taking shorter showers and using fewer sprinklers outside. And while these help, there are some home projects, both indoor and outdoor, that will make a lasting impact on your home's water usage. One thing I've done in my home is replacing my shower head with a low flow model. And outside, you can plant native and drought resistant plants that require less water or switch to water conserving lawn care practices like collecting rainwater to water your plants or upgrading your irrigation system. Inside, consider switching to low flow toilets and faucets, which decrease water flow by 30%. Also, regularly check for leaks around your home, which can waste water and cause property damage. If you suspect a leak, call your plumber. Just tell me this is it. Tell me yes. if this, is, this yes. is the reveal. Yes, I think the music is working now. <laughs> so Fiesta's finally here. We've revealed us. Yeah. And now it's time to reveal the yes. location of yes. today's Fiesta Metal Giveaway. Here we go. Ta da! Starting at 8 a.m., you can get one at the HEB at 5601 Bandera Road. That's just inside Loop 410. It is first come, first serve again this morning. That begins at 8. Once again, medals will be given away while supplies last. Very cool. Now let's go ahead and check in with Stephen to see if the drive to the medal giveaway would be. <laughs> OK, there no long lines just yet. Thankfully, we're just seeing some easy traffic this early in the morning. But let's get a look around town. 1604 Bandera, we're seeing a little bit of a cluster there of, of vehicles that our people are waking up and getting their morning started early with us. 37 at Fair Avenue looking pretty normal out there, but of course, always be on the lookout. Stalls have been the issue. This is the latest one off I-10 westbound right there at Ralph Fair Road, not causing issues. But what I'm looking at is a little bit of a slowdown here in the eastbound lanes, and that should be the eastbound lanes of 151 right there at 410 where we do have another stall vehicle that was reported. So again, you can see that is a problem. But as we get the wide look at the map this early in the morning, no major slowdowns just yet. But keep in mind 1604, the usual spot. We're seeing that light congestion already starting to build in that area. But another look around town does show that San Antonio is up and people are moving. Hi, Mom. Good morning. Happy birthday. I just wanted to wish you happy birthday. And here's a birthday song. Happy birthday to you, cha cha cha. Happy birthday to you, cha cha cha. Happy birthday, dear mommy, cha cha cha. Happy birthday to you, cha cha cha. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, watch your step slow down there. No, <laughs> like being a mom again. Oh my goodness. Thank you guys so much. How yeah. sweet. That was Aww. awesome. That was awesome. That was cool. I was like, wait a minute. What are you doing on the screen? I was like, you got to be getting ready for school right now. She's out the door. She's yeah. already up early. Aww. Love the cha 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 part. <laughs> Love that. that That's her perfect. version yeah. of happy birthday. That's pretty good. <laughs> it's uh, the good Rooney job. version. Yes. Good yeah. job, perfect. Rooney. And uh, yes. Yes. Happy birthday, Steph. Thank I wish you. you the happiest of birthdays today. Enjoy it. Fiesta, Steph's birthday. There's so much going on today. It's going to be great. We had great weather yesterday. Today is going to be equally as nice. Look at the sunrise coming up. It's, uh, it's gorgeous out there right now. 52 degrees, 60 at Stinson, 56 Kelly, and we're down to 48 at Randolph. Uh, light winds as it stands right now, but those winds will pick up a little bit later this afternoon. 40s in places like Kerrville and Fredericksburg and New Braunfels. 50s for everyone else. 53 Divine, uh, 56 Port SA, 53 down there in Pleasanton. Mostly clear skies. What can you expect today? Those temperatures will climb close to 70 by lunchtime. 73 degrees, 70 Ferrox Ranch, 70 in Bernie, 76 Floresville at noon. And then by this afternoon, you're all the way up to 84 here in town. 81 Hondo, 81 in New Braunfels. Another really, really nice day. The only difference will be we are expecting more wind today. Gusts 20 to 25 during the afternoon out of the south, and that will drag in a little bit more moisture. Makes the golf a little more difficult today. Two Valero, Texas open underway uh, today. Mostly sunny. Those breezy winds will be there mid 80s. Uh, the temperatures will be nice uh, over the weekend. And we'll see less wind Saturday, but the winds pick back up on Sunday for the golfers out of the southeast 5 to 15 miles per hour. Here's a look at the future cast. Today, again, mostly sunny skies, but as we get into tomorrow morning, a very weak frontal battery works in. This gives us a 10% chance of rain. We're not going to get much out of this. Not a big deal. That front comes through. It doesn't really change our forecast much. Mostly sunny and warm 
Saturday afternoon. Clouds may briefly return Sunday morning and Sunday is going to be just like Saturday, partly cloudy and really pretty nice. As we get into Monday, here's where things change a little bit. Storm system pulls in. We're going to get some drizzle, some clouds early, and then maybe a few showers during the uh, afternoon hours, and then a chance for some thunderstorms late. This is going to be Monday night into early Tuesday. We'll see how this uh, times out around the river parade. But uh, if we do see some storms, there's an opportunity for a couple strong ones, and that's why this is a window we, we kind of have to watch. I think by Tuesday morning, a lot of this is pushing south and southeast of us, and then we're going to get some hot temperatures on Tuesday. Tuesday is our hottest day in our seven day forecast for sure. 87 Saturday, 86 Sunday, 82 Monday with some morning drizzle, maybe some showers during the afternoon and a chance for thunderstorms late as we said right now we have it at a 40% chance. 92 Tuesday front comes through Wednesday that brings some windy conditions and then cooler conditions by Thursday and possibly on into Friday too for Battle of Flowers. So this could time out really well. We like it. We give it a thumbs up. Okay. Thank you, Justin. What can you say? That doesn't get any better than that. Good weather. <laughs> 651 and 53 degrees. And we also want to wish Asian Burimia a happy birthday. We are our birthday twins. <laughs> this is photojournalist Asian. He's behind the camera during live shots on GMSA, and we hope he can hear us, and we hope that he has a wonderful birthday. Right, get out your pen and paper or your camera or whatever and take a picture of this because this is where you can go to get your Fiesta medal. <laughs> it's at the HEB at 5601 Bandera Road. It's just inside Loop 410 over there. Giveaway is going to start at 8 this morning, so you got time, but it is a first serve, first come, first serve basis. So you got yeah. to get in line. Got to hurry on over there. And I look at the roads at Loop 1604 and Bandera. Looks mm -hmm. like traffic is picking up a little. It's picking up, but thankfully no problems to report here. Just some normal congestion. As we bring you into the map, we do not have any issues right now. But keep in mind, uh, we are seeing the slowdown there in the west, northwest side. And there along 151 eastbound travel times. Keep in mind, 29 minutes. It's going to take you coming in from 281 southbound and Bulverde. Steven, thank you. We've got uh, mostly clear skies out there this morning. Temperatures are in the 40s and 50s, so a little chilly, but it warms up quick. 73 noontime, 79 by 2 p.m., 84 by 5 p.m. Looking perfect. Southerly winds 10 to 20 and gusty. Extended forecast. We're going to go 87 Saturday, 86 Sunday. We do have a chance for some showers and storms coming up late Monday and early Tuesday and a warm day on Tuesday. Sorry, Justin. I'm saying yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you. There you go. Guys. Happy birthday, Steph. Oh, 